Hello, welcome to the Kitchen Spy. My name is Kate and this is another recipe video. So this is a recipe for mince and potato bake. Uh, I've made this recipe a couple of times recently and a couple of you on, well quite a few of you on Instagram and on Meals of the Week have asked to see the recipe. So it didn't come from a cookbook or anything, it was just something that because um, I'm not really planning meals at the moment, I'm kind of cooking with what I can get and we'd got some mince and we'd got some potatoes so I thought rather than do just a cottage pie as I would normally uh, we'd uh, end up making this and uh, it, it's really lovely um, it's quite low calorie because I use 5% fat beef and also don't use lots of oil and things but you can use whatever beef you've got in and I think it would also work with um, like turkey mince or chicken mince but um, anyway let's have a look at the recipe okay so in terms of ingredients we've got one tablespoon of tomato puree two cloves of garlic which have been crushed and also one and a half teaspoons of dried mixed herbs then I've got a couple of carrots and these came to 180 grams and they've just been diced up quite uh, quite small. Um, that's about six ounces and the same here is one large onion and again that actually weighed in at just under 180 pounds, 180 pounds, 180 grams. And then I've got a couple of sticks of celery which I've chopped finely and when I use celery um, I always take the strings off the front and I just do that by running a potato peeler down the front of the, um, the stalk. Then I've got one large leek, and it is large, so I've chopped uh, the roundels in half. I've got 500 grams of 5% fat beef, or you can use whatever beef you've got. And then here I've got uh, quite a lot of potatoes. This is, um, it weighed in at 762 grams of potatoes. That's just under two pounds. And they've been peeled and I've very finely sliced them. Now I've done this by hand, but you could probably use a food processor to do that and get um, a, a more even um, split. Then I've got 500 uh, mils of stock, which was made with a beef stock pot and a red wine stock cube. And the bowl at the front has got cheese in for sprinkling on top, and that was 72 grams. Then over at the pan, uh, I've just got some sunflower oil here, and I am just going to spray a few sprays in. You can use a tablespoon of olive oil if that's what you want, but a tablespoon of oil is about 123 calories, so I'd rather not use that. Um, then we add the onions and we just want to cook these onions until they're a kind of pale golden brown. It's not like we would do if we were doing a curry where we would want them much darker um, but just a pale golden brown is good. When we've reached that stage um, as you can see here I'm just going to start adding the other ingredients so I'm going to start off with the tomato puree the garlic and the mixed herbs and I'm just going to give those a big old stir through the onions to make sure that the onions are coated in all these lovely flavorings and then once we've done that we can start to add the other ingredients starting with the minced beef um, and again as usual with the minced beef we just want to brown that off so here's the beef going in and um, this pack uh, I think I took this out of the freezer so it, um, uh, it's it's really kind of condensed together so um, it's taken a bit of breaking up but if you just keep working at it eventually obviously all the pieces will um, fall to fall apart and then you'll be left with um, a beautiful mince mixture like this which is all browned through and each piece is individual and then we can start adding the vegetables in any order you want really. So I started with the carrots, then I popped in the celery and then I added the leeks. But it really absolutely doesn't matter which order you put them in or indeed what vegetables you use. So um, I just used these because I'd got all of these in the cupboard. Um, I think the carrots probably um, need to be there. But as for the other vegetables, I mean, you can add whatever you've got, really. You could even add peas, I suppose. But if you were going to do that, I would just add that at the end of the cooking time. 
Um, and so once um, the vegetables are in and we've given them um, a stir round and everything's mixed up, um, I'm going to add the teaspoon of Worcester sauce that I forgot to show you earlier. Um, and also um, then I'm going to add the stock. Just mix everything all the way through so that we're just starting to fry those vegetables off. So I'm just going in with the stock and as I said, it's made with um, one nor beef stock pot. You can use stock cubes, that's no problem at all. Um, and also a Tesco red wine stock cube, uh, stock pot. And if you can't find that, then just a splash of wine or even just a splash of balsamic vinegar would add um, the same kind of, uh, if not exactly the same, but the same kind of flavor profile. So once the stock's all in, then I'm just going to give it a good old season with just pepper this time. And that's because the stock has got quite a lot of salt in it. Um, and as we layer the bake up, we'll also be putting a bit more salt in. So um, I'm just adding pepper at this stage. Then what we need to do with this is just leave it to cook through. Um, I'm going to pop a lid on and then I'm going to leave that to cook for about 30 minutes until everything's cooked, the vegetables have started to soften um, and the, the juices from the meat have all been released. As you can see, after about 30 minutes, um, come back and have a look. Um, I'm happy with this in terms of the fact that uh, I don't need to boil it anymore with the lid on. But what I'm going to do is, as you can see, it's quite runny, is I'm just going to bubble that away without a lid until it just gets a little bit thicker. We still need it to be quite um, a liquidy mixture because we're going to be cooking the potatoes in the mixture. So then once we've reached that stage, we just need to start assembling with the uh, potatoes and the mince mixture and an oven proof dish. And we just want to layer this up using um, a layer of mince first, just making sure that it covers the base of the pan. And you can see how liquidy that is, but because we are baking the potatoes within the mince mixture, we really want to make sure that we have got some liquid in there. So start with a layer of the mince and then start to layer up the potatoes. Of course, you're not actually going to see this once, um, once the, uh, the dish is finished. So you don't have to be particularly neat or tidy about it. Um, I'm just kind of um, randomly uh, throwing the potatoes on. Um, you, well, actually, I'm being quite neat, I suppose, but you don't have to be. Um, anyway, so once you've done that, then uh, season the potatoes with a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper and then carry on building the bake all the way through um, until we reach the top layer of mince. So, um, yeah, what I've really kind of liked about doing this recipe is that you can use whatever you've got in your fridge. And like I said earlier, I think it would work well with chicken mince or turkey mince or pork mince. Um, and I think you could probably do it with small pieces of, um, of uh, stewing beef as well. Um, but you'd probably just need to cook that longer. Then once you've reached the uh, last layer of mince, just make sure you use all of that gravy. So I'm just um, tipping that in there. And then I'm going to put on the final um, layer of potatoes. And this time I'm going to try and be a little bit neater really, because this is what we all see on top. Um, now it's a bit kind of hit and miss really about how, many, how much potatoes you need uh, in terms of weight. Um, and uh, as you can see, I've got a few left over there so I'm just uh, I don't want to waste them and there's hardly any point in keeping them in the fridge in water or anything so I'm just pushing them all on there um, and then once we've done that I'm just gonna give it a final season of salt and pepper and then what I'm going to do is cover it with cheese and once we've done that um, we're going to bake it in a, a fan oven so I've baked it at fan oven 160 for about 50 minutes or until the potatoes are soft and you can push a knife through really easily so the cheese I'm using here is um, there's um, a, 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 most of it is just cheddar 
um, so strong cheddar, um, or mature cheddar. And then there is, I think, a little bit of like a Parmesan type cheese in there as well. But you can use whatever cheese you want. And if I'd have got any, and I haven't, and I haven't had any for ages, because it seems impossible to get at the moment for some reason, I would have definitely put some red Leicester cheese on there because it gives a different colourway um, on top of the bake. Um, as you can see, I've got a little uh, corner of cheese there which uh, didn't uh, get grated um, for some reason. I don't know, it must have crumbled off. Anyway, I've just popped it on. And then I'm just going to put on uh, a little shake of paprika. I always do this with anything that I put um, into the oven with cheese on. I think it just gives it a better colour when it comes out and also a little bit of flavour. So as I say, into a preheated fan oven 160 for about 50 minutes or until it's ready and here it is ready and um, I just love the look of anything with melted cheese on top of it um, and this has got um, quite a lot of cheese on you don't have to put the cheese on if you don't want to and if I wasn't going to be using cheese probably what I would do is just give it a, f a, a bit of a spray with some oil on top of the potatoes so that they do brown a little bit easier um, but um, you can't beat things with cheese on in my opinion so here it is all plated up so um, this recipe makes a generous four portions and this was one of those portions so this was 442 calories for this plate of food and it was really filling really tasty um, and even though we're not in winter at the moment it, it, it was a very cozy and comforting meal to be eating and I think that is exactly what all of us need at the moment so there you are, that's my mince and potato bake. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching the video and if you have, please give it a thumbs up. That's, uh, it really helps if you do that. Um, and also, if you are a subscriber, thank you so much for subscribing. I really appreciate it. And if you aren't yet a subscriber and you've watched a few of my videos, I do recipes, meals of the week and food hauls. And I've also got um, a greenhouse um, lockdown uh, renovation project going on at the moment then please consider subscribing because the more the merrier um, and it's great to have the interaction that I have with you guys in the comments I really appreciate the fact that you guys take the opportunity to a watch the videos and b take the trouble to make a comment and I really do love the conversations that we have and uh, as usual stay safe take care thanks very much for watching See you on the next one. Bye-bye.